Hi, my name is Tim Sasurchi. I'm Product Manager of AS Interface at Pepperl and Fuchs. And today, I'm going to build a complete AS Interface system consisting of I.O. modules, cable, power supplies, and a gateway. So, I'm just going to get started and we're going to put the gateway on the little demo panel here. Okay, so here's our, our gateway. This is an AS Interface gateway to Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP, either one and it's got a built-in safety controller. You can actually buy these gateways for um, any number of networks like Profibus, DeviceNet, Modbus, and so on. Okay, so there's many options available. So this is going to do two things. Talk to the upper-level bus system like Ethernet IP as a big I.O. block, or, or I should say, and it's going to talk to our I.O. modules on the AS Interface network. Um, we're going to set that up right now. So the first thing we want to do is put our ASI cable. AS interface is unique in that it's got a two conductor flat cable that you're going to attach all of your modules to. This is going to be for power and communication. So we'll take our brown and blue here and we're going to attach it to the yellow terminals, brown plus, blue minus. It's important that we go on the yellow side because that's where your network connectivity goes. Uh, the the flat cable here was easily stripped. I want to show you that with our stripping tool. You can see I use this here. It really makes it easy when you want to strip your flat cable. Okay, usually I strip about one inch at a time and then I'll take off maybe two inches, strip it back, and then I put ferrules on just to make sure that the copper didn't uh, fray and maybe accidentally short out. Okay, the next thing I want to do is connect my AS interface power supply. That's going to go on the black terminals. Okay, so here's my Aussie power supply. I'm going to connect that right here. Snap it on the DIN rail. I've already attached a power cable for 120 volts. I'll go ahead and plug that right into my wall strip. And now I want to connect the power supply to the gateway. It's important that an ASI power supply do two things. Be designed for AS interface, of course, but also be a 30 volt decoupled power supply designed for the flat cable. So we're going to attach my ASI plus and minus here. I've already stripped the flat cable and uh, put my ferrules on the ends and then attach it to the black terminals here. The black terminals are used for the power supply special in that uh, this gateway has a feature called duplicate address detection. So the current goes from the power supply through the black terminals into the gateway and then out to the network. Um, it can detect duplicate addresses by measuring the current that is uh, coming back from the node when two communicate versus one. Okay. The next thing we want to do is connect our auxiliary power. Auxiliary power is used for auxiliary uh, inputs and for outputs on an Aussie network. So we're going to plug this in. I've already pre-wired the 110 volts. Alright, so that's done. And the next thing I want to do is put the flat cable on the power supply. And remember, the auxiliary power supply does not connect to the gateway at all. This is completely for the Aussie network, for outputs, and that is about it. So I'm going to connect again, brown plus, blue minus. So now I got my Aussie network for the yellow cable, my black auxiliary power. And now I can start attaching I.O. modules. So the first one I want to do is I have a G12 flat cable module. It's got four inputs and four outputs. You can see the addressing jack here. On AS interface, every module has an address. First thing I want to do is put the address in using the handheld programmer. The handheld programmer is, a, is an invaluable tool when you want to program modules on the network. It really makes your installation time much quicker. 
So I'm going to make this 1A. The addresses can be 1, 1A through 31A, 1B through 31B. So I'm going to program that. Read it back to double check. All right, slide this back. This is called the G12 toolless design. You're going to slide the top back, put the flat cable in both trays, lay the cable in. All right, make sure it's seated properly. Slide top of the module back, press it down. Okay, pretty simple to do. You can see your Aussie flat cable, you can see it's nice and parallel. And um, so I got one module on here, address 1A. Let me put another one on. This one, I'm going to actually try our G11 series. We can sell this with an M12 AS interface connection or flat cable. You can buy it either way. And I'm going to use one of our new G10 splitters. Okay, this has got flat cable connection, so I'm going to mount it here. And you're going to attach it with the screw in the middle, and it's got a pigtail that you can connect the G11 to. So the first thing we're going to do is address the module. Okay, so we're going to attach the handheld to the module through the M12 connection. Okay, because we can do 1A through 31A and 1B through 31B, I'm going to make this 1B. I like to alternate between A and B. That way, if later I need a full address for a safety module or an analog, it's available for me. Okay. For the handheld programmer, you can buy this in a kit. We have this in a plastic case, and it comes with four programming cables. We got the uh, M12 extension. We got one with the cinch cable. We got one for the G10 flat and then also one with just terminals. So I would suggest using that if you want to connect program modules. Okay, I'm going to put this G10 accessory on. The ASI is on the top of the tray. Put it in. Use a bigger screwdriver, a little easier. This is just a passive splitter that I'll connect to the G11 series. The M12 series allows you to run the flat cable, let's say, in a cable tray and then take the accessory and mount this wherever you need on the machine. So now I have 1A and 1B on. So the next one I'm going to put on here is the G10 uh, AS interface module. This has got the same size as the passive splitter but it's got electronics in it for uh, inputs and outputs. In this case, it's two inputs on two pigtails. Before I attach it, though, I want to address it. This one doesn't have an addressing jack, but it has a flat cable tray. So I take this flat cable adapter, stick it in my G10 module, press it down, and take the adapter and put it in the handheld programmer. I am going to make this address 2A. Make sure I can take it off. So this little adapter also comes in the kit. So this will attach the same way that the accessory did. All right, so I got three models on the network now, 1A, 1B, and 2A, okay? You'll just connect your I.O. directly here to the pigtails. Okay, my next module, I'm going to go to an analog module because we can put digital and analog on both, um, both on one network. This is also in the G11 housing. Um, this is the flat cable version, so I'm going to just put the, the base underneath the module. Go ahead and lay them in the tray. Now this one I'm going to address, doesn't have the M12 on it, it's got the addressing jack. So this is the same way that the G12 is addressed. This is an analog module, so I'm actually going to address this at address 31. 
The main reason for that is this gateway over here maps digital and analog on AS interface. It'll map all of the digital directly in the PLC, no problem. It will also map three addresses on each network of analog. In this case, it will uh, uh, directly map analog 29, 30, and 31. So I'm going to make this 31 so it'll be directly mapped. You can make it another address too, just that you would have to get the analog data acyclically in the PLC. So let me make this address 31. Okay, that's address 31. Go ahead and put that on the network. Screw it down. Right, make sure it's tight. These are IP69K rated, so you can put them in a washdown environment. Just make sure that you have dust caps on all the ports so you don't get any water leakage. All right, so now I have four modules on here. You can see it doesn't really matter if the addresses are in order. Okay, the next one we're going to put on is a safety module. It's an e-stop. Because AS interface is perfect for digital, analog, and safety all in one network, we have no problem of mixing and matching these components. So I'm going to use the new G10 style M12 to flat cable connector. It's got nice labels on here as to where to put OSI and auxiliary. You can attach your e-stop directly to the connector. The electronics are all in the e-stop, so this is just a passive component. So I'm going to go ahead and snap that on. The one thing I also want to make sure is address this before I put it on the network. just makes it easier. Just push the connectors on. I'm going to make this, let's say, uh, address 10. It doesn't really matter, as long as it's a free address. So I'm going to use the same cable that I did for the programming. I'm just going to plug it right into the network. Okay, so all my I.O. modules are on the network. G12, 1A, G11, 1B. This is the G10, it's got 2A, address 31 for my analog, and my safety module is address 10. Okay, so I got a full network. So the last thing we want to do is make sure that the modules that we configured are on the network properly. So on the display, we notice that the PRJ mode is lit and we can start to see all the nodes that are displayed. If the PRJ mode isn't lit, just press the mode button down until the PRJ LED comes on. So right now it's going to go through the network 1 scan, 1A, 2A, 10, and 31, and 1B. That's exactly correct. 2.40 just means that there's a power fail on network 2, which is exactly correct. We haven't wired anything to that yet. So the next thing you want to do is store the configuration, and we have a nice quick setup option for that. So we hit the OK button, go down to Quick Setup, to the second menu of the main screen. Outputs may be modified, it tells you, because the network will go offline temporarily, so make sure you're OK with that. Arrow down to Store plus Run, hit OK. And notice right away the PRJ mode is off, so it's in protected mode. There's no configuration error anymore. Ethernet error is normal because we have nothing connected yet. Everything is running perfectly fine. Thanks for watching this video about AS Interface. Please go to our YouTube channel for more videos, more information.